Hey folks, welcome back. Yesterday someone asked me if it's possible to recreate Silencer inside of Bitwig Studio with native tools. And Silencer is a plugin that can load other reverb plugins. And then you can send in notes or audio signals and trigger this plugin. And when you trigger it, you reset the reverb buffer or you reset or choke the reverb tail. And it uses here some kind of patent pending technology Whatever this means, it's probably marketing speak. I have no idea. Um, so you can do something like this in Bitwig pretty easily. It's probably not the same quality. It doesn't have the same features, right? It doesn't have the interface, but you can achieve some of the, some of the sim similar effects. So here I'm using a polymer synthesizer going straight into a Valhalla reverb. When I play multiple notes, you can hear all the notes go into the reverb. So, so the reverb tail is pretty busy with a lot of sounds, a lot of different frequencies. And the idea is now that we actually reset this buffer, this reverb tail, every time a note comes in. And for me, when I try something like this, I go for a chain here, a chain uh, container and put the reverb into it. And we also use here the mix 100% of this Valhalla. VST, but the chain goes to maybe 50%. So I'm using the mix knob here of the chain container. And then all I'm doing is I'm using a, um, what's it called, um, ADSR. Uh, this is kind of triggered by notes and I make it pretty short, just a short burst of, um, yeah, of a modulation signal. And then I'm switching off the reverb here, right? I'm modulating down. So every time I hit a note now, you can see it switches shortly off. And you end up with the reverb tile only on the last um, yeah, note you are playing. So you can basically take here an ARP, make this pretty fast. So there's no reverb getting busy all the time because every time you play a new note, you choke or you reset the reverb tail of this Valhalla Supermassive here. And this also not only works with Valhalla, you can also use here, um, for instance, Raum by Native Instruments. Uh, maybe use the mix here 100% and lock this. And then you do the same thing more or less. You disable just the plug-in. You can see here, um, you can keep this open. Even though you disable the container, um, the plug-in still works, kind of. So it's not like you are completely switching off the thing. It's just probably internally the container of the VST that um, is switched off. So, But it also resets the, um, the internal buffer for some reason. Right? Instead of... So it's a completely different sound. So this is how I would try to achieve this. Um, it probably has some shortcomings, uh, some problems, or it's maybe not that smooth like the silencer plugin. Um, sometimes when you have like muted sounds like um, a sign, you can sometimes hear some pops and clicks from the plug-in switching on again. But then you can counter this here maybe with the segments. Um, and yeah, mute or bring down the, the mix here. Something like this. What's more like? More like this, maybe a bit faster, 16 note. Yeah, it's pretty clean. So you can work around here um, with the segments to actually 
fade in or fade out the reverb plugin over time uh, when there are some artifacts from switching on or off the device itself. But usually you, you barely hear it. If you have some sounds with overtones, you can't hear it. So it may be the case that sometimes the switch on or the trigger is too late. Um, so let's say you have a note, something like this. And here with the gate on, you trigger basically the reset of the reverb tail. And then here you switch on the reverb, but then you kind of miss here this portion, the attack inside of the reverb. And maybe you want to have it inside of the reverb, right? You don't want to switch here the reverb off. You want to have the full length of the note inside of the reverb. Um, so you can do this here by just using in front of the reverb inside of the container, use a time shift. And I, yeah, use here something very long so you can see how it works. So I play a note. You can see how then the reverb is switching off and then it switches on and then the note comes in. Right? So with this um, delay here, you can just move this a bit into the future, more or less, 25 milliseconds, I don't know. Yeah, and with this you can bring in the full note, also the attack and everything that comes after the attack. If you don't want to use note triggers, you can also use audio, but then it's a bit more complicated because you have to find the threshold, right? What triggers what and so on, how long is the sound? And it's a bit more complicated. You have to tweak the audio and you have to make envelope followers and so on. So the easiest way to do this is to use the replacer. Um, it looks like this. I have here by default time shift in there. But this one kind of sends out a note into this FX box here, right? So when I play a note, you can see a threshold and then everything that's in red here is basically a trigger. It triggers a note C3 with the velocity. Then you just put this in here. And then when this here, the threshold is above the audio, you can see there's no trigger coming in for my MIDI keyboard. But then um, it receives trigger from this replacer here. So with this, you have to play around with the right threshold for your sound and so on, but it's still possible. So this is, I would say, the easiest way of doing this with audio, just using the replacer. You can, of course, use the grid and then, you know, make a threshold and... Um, a trigger generator or a trigger detector for yourself if you want to, but this is the easiest way of doing this. And then, yeah, you just disable here the plug-in with the modulation. That's basically it, and it works fine for me at least. So yeah, um, that's it for this video. I hope it clears up some things, and that's how you can kind of replace Silencer inside of Bitwig Studio with native tools. Thanks for watching. Leave a like, leave a subscription. See you next time. Bye.